Hello and welcome to the Hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is thing uh we got it from here thanks for your service by a tribe called quest there are those ellipses in the middle of the title which made <laughs> me jump to the second half first there for a second a tribe called quest was an american hip-hop group formed in saint albans queen new york queens new york in 1985 they are regarded as a pioneer of alternative hip-hop music we got it from here thanks for you for your service is their sixth and final album and this gets a bit interesting. I, it was I released. Had no idea. <laughs> I've heard of a tribe called Quest, but until today, the only one of them I had heard was Q-Tip, and that was on some guest appearances. So right. I really knew nothing about them. Um, the album was released 18 years after their fifth album, The Love Movement, and a decade a decade after the band, the group split up due to interpersonal issues. Um, for years, they denied that any new, t- new material was recorded or even planned, although they reunite- reunited briefly to play several shows during Kanye West's Yeezus tour in 2013. On November 13th, 2015, they performed on the Jimmy Fallon show the same night as the Paris attacks. Feeling charged, the group put aside their differences and decided to record the album in secrecy. Uh, group member Q-Tip said that because of the Tonight Show appearance, quote, I knew if we were connecting with that kind of energy in a performance, it would be easy good to go back into the studio. Member Fife Dog's mother said her son, quote, thought they might be able to make a five song EP and that would be it. <laughs> he never thought they'd have enough for a whole album. Obviously they did. Um, we got it from here. Thank you. Thank you for your service was released on November 11th, 2016 on Epic Re- Records. Produced by a Tribe Called Quest and Bruce uh, Brian Tribe Called Quest and Blair Wells, apologies, and features Q-Tip on vocals, bass, drums, keyboards, and drum programming, Fife on vocals, uh, Jerobi White on vocals, and way too many guest musicians to list here. <laughs> the list is on Wikipedia. Go ahead and look it up if you want. Um, we'll be mentioning John. Like, how, how are you going to handle this? Huh? <laughs> I did this in a previous episode that had a where the album had a ridiculously long list of guest players. Yeah, it, it would be Genesis Ten if I listed you know everybody who played on it. You know, all the begats. It would be that. I'm not going to go. Th- I'm not going to put you or the listeners through that. Go look at the list if you want. Um, they we're going to be created a Sergeant Pepper's cast yeah. of, of people coming in to this album we'll be mentioning a few few notable guests here and there um reminder i don't edit any, any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons but down in the description if you're listening to this on youtube and on our blog at johnandscotto.com you'll find links to we got it from here thank you for your service on spotify and youtube so you can follow along if you'd like uh, track one the space program Contains a sample from Willy, contains samples from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's um, funny because I was listening. I think this and like Primus and the Chocolate Factory were out around the same time. So okay, <laughs> listening to a lot of Oompa Loompa songs. Hmm. Um, <laughs> love the electric piano riff that comes in, and oh, the yeah. groove it creates with this syncopated bass. It's a very sparse bass line that just hits on the right spots to create this great syncopation. Um, it has a really nice frenetic pace when it gets going. Now, what I wondered was what, I, what is that sample that go up to the stars from? They like, don't mention any other samples. So Willy Wonka is the only one. Like, is and it that's from, the end. It's like some up with the people or something like that, okay. you know, fifth dimension shit, you know, but that's what it I, sounds like. It's yeah, just this crazy optimism of like, we're going up to the stars. But of course, yeah. the, the message of the song is that like, they're not going to fucking take us up there with them. No, no, no. Um, the chorus is a great left turn. Completely changes the song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I loved that. Completely Caught me completely off guard. Um. Loved the sort of heavily reverbed claps. They use that a few times in the album. Really interesting sound. Um, and there's this guitar that comes in toward the end. Really, int- really nice part. Oh, this whole tension that they build with this. Like it starts yeah, out yeah. so sparse, just with that kind of quiet rapping, and then it just mm-hmm. swirls up and together, and it is literally a rocket launch. 
yeah, yeah. start the album. Um, there are these doubled vocals at the end. The rap is doubled an octave down. Really interesting, kind of menacing sound. Oh yeah, yeah. They are not afraid to to menace. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the Wonka sample at the end, which <laughs> it's just funny and goofy <laughs> and complete. Oh, and and the context how it changes the context of that dialogue to what the song is about that is true fascinating that's true it's yeah it's good for us yeah <laughs> kind of like oh yeah someone had said recently that the year I mean, 2020 well, mm-hmm. should have the oompa loompas come out at the end of each yeah. month and sing yeah. the lesson we all need to learn <laughs> right right now i will say willy wonka is is subversive as fuck yeah but it, it still changes the, this song still changes the meaning again on to track two we the people this contains a sample of behind the wall of sleep by black sabbath i before today i knew the smithereen song behind the wall of sleep i love that i had never heard the black sabbath song i had to listen to it i did not catch the sabbath sample in this song i think i had but i I hadn't yeah i hadn't put two and two together i think there's something with the bait or I don't know, actually, what what they took. Mm, I don't know, but I love that big synth synth riff that comes in. Um, I mean, this came out... This song was released before the album, uh so this was like... uh, This This was was the lead-off single. This was my introduction to them, really. I I mean, as as an older guy, I should have heard of them, Uh but I guess I just wasn't into hip-hop that much. Are we older? I guess so we are. <laughs> but Don't think of yourself that way. Anyway. So, so my introduction yeah. to them, and I guess this is like when you see like the black guys listening to the uh the old school classic rock stuff and getting into it. This is the reverse <laughs> of this. Where, where here, here's you know, the white guy going, Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> Neither of us were into hip hop back then. I've I am still very limited in hip hop I listen to. Uh you're more into it than I am. Uh, obviously, because you're the one, with the exception of MC Frontalot, you're the one who's brought the hip hop album. And so, um, yeah, this album, this song was released before the election in '16. Okay. And I just the first time I think I heard it was like the day after the election, and it oh just, shit, it was just a punch to the jaw yeah. at that moment, um, and was just like, holy fuck, this is exactly what's going on right now. Uh, and it's, it's, played, they, it's kind of like an anthem. They were, you know, they oh, yeah, it's very anthemic. years ahead. Yeah. Um, love how it, they play with the timing. They all stops and starts in the verse. Very catchy melody in the chorus. But the point of the song, as I could tell, and, and I don't pick up lyrics a lot first on the first listen, but the point of it, and I, and I really, I mean, my particular group was not mentioned, but it's, he mentions a number of minority groups in the song. Um, yeah. how they're not welcome anywhere. Yeah. Uh, we're not welcome anywhere. Didn't yeah, mention they're... disabled people, but I think it also applies to us. We're kind of invisible. Not going to go off on that rant, but, but yeah. Um, very, very interesting, especially given the timing of the election. I was not aware right. of that. Yeah. This, this song was definitely, I think they used this in the camp, in the campaign leading up and I hadn't heard it until like, I think alt rock station started playing this. Mm-hmm right after the ele- election night <laughs> everybody's just like fuck yeah <laughs> so yeah if you look at the date the album was released a week after the election okay now i have a confession i, I said i'd heard q-tip before this i had heard q-tip on one song i knew of tribe called quest because and q-tip because i knew knew of him from one particular song any guesses uh, there's a Beastie Boys song. I can't remember which one it was. Not Beasties, though. not Beasties. <clears throat> it's the one that anyone who was who has heard any music from the late eighties, nineties, I can't exactly I can't exactly remember exactly when, knows Groove is in the Heart. Oh. He does the rap on Groove is in the Heart. That's the only reason I knew who Q Tip and really? Trap Called Quest were. Uh, it's gonna kill me though, which Beastie Boys song Q Tip <laughs> played mm-hmm. on. I have to have um, to like hit the google right now <laughs> to be but, honest i i kind of confused him a little bit with krs1 who do rapped on radio song by rem so oh, you know, that's good. where i'm coming to this from it's a it is a really good bc boys song too. get it together from ill communication okay on to track three whatever will be 
This contains a sample from Promised Land by Nairobi Sisters. Great groove. I love the echo on the background vocals. Or not yeah. the echo. They, they put this effect on the sample. Like it's like this delay echo. It's really interesting. And I know this is a th- common thing in hip hop, but trading off the vocals in this particular song caught my attention because it really changes the pace and the texture really nicely. Yeah. And just that that entrancing vocals that they use. Mm-hmm. I guess that, that would be the Nairobi sister yeah, yeah. sample. I'm assuming. I, I don't know the song, but I'm assuming, yeah, they're these background singers. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I hadn't heard much Q-Tip before this album. Just one song. But I love how he approaches a groove. He's he's playing bass on this himself, isn't he? Yeah, um, he's listed as a ba- as playing bass on a number of tracks. I, I said I just listed what he plays. It specifies the songs. He yeah, doesn't play bass really on every song. Follow, but yeah, he doesn't play him. bass on every song. Um, just and quite a few of them, but not every song. There's another bassist listed. Um, he also plays keys and drums. Um, I was yeah. impressed that he plays. In- I don't. I don't expect a rapper to play a musical instrument. I was <laughs> impressed. Um, but. I love how he approaches a groove because at times he's a bit lazy and slow, like like kind of a Snoop Dogg style. Yeah. Other times he's very quick, but he's always a little off kilter with the groove. He never, he's never on the beat, which was very fascinating. He's always a little syncopated. Um, on to track four, solid wall of sound. <laughs> this contains a sample from Benny and the Jets by Elton John. Now I will, it's, I will say Benny and the Jets one of the most annoying songs ever written. And Bismarck E covered this already. And it was mm-hmm. that was disastrous. <laughs> but it works on this song somehow. Because they're just using a sample yeah. and building off it. And <laughs> they're taking a e. random they're taking a line from the middle of the song. Well, about that the I never even sound. Never caught in the lyrics. I don't think I had either, tell you the truth. Um but I, I love the opening drum groove. Really nice use of that sample. Because um, yeah, they're taking they, in it. They're building a literal solid wall yeah, of sound with it. Yeah. Around that sample. that And it's very clear in their use. They're not kind of trying to hide it at all. They're very clearly using that song. But they're building around it, doing something really interesting with it. And I like the repetition. It's it's just this nice drone that it creates. You um, like the, the repetition. Okay, there are spots. Date and time. <laughs> I, there have been a few times where I've enjoyed repetition on an album. I have complained about it a lot too, but there are times when I enjoy it. It creates a drone, and there are a couple of spots on this yes. album when I, where I will compliment it. And there's also one song where, where I will complain about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think there's one that I was kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> um, we'll get to that. There's also, there's also a nice piano. Elton John guessed it on this song. Um, <laughs> That's vocals great. and piano. <laughs> sang on it, played piano. I didn't know he was on it until I heard him sing sing this other line that wasn't from Benny and the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love how it stays nice and soft. It makes you listen, the vocal. Well, I like, love they, that when they slow it down in the end, like they build the wall of sound and yeah. then they just, you know, break it down with this little soft. Uh, mm-hmm. And there are spots where the vocals are mixed very low. Yes. But that really just make you listen. Love that. Um, nice melody that comes in toward the end. That's the part that Alton John sings. Um, on to track five, Dis Generation contains samples from Pest the Duchy by Musical Youth. I was going to say, as an 80s kid. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, should... And apologies for this pronunciation. Ru- Ruido Di Maggio by Invisible. Um, great anthemic opening. Very sort of 70s soul. Uh, I fucking love this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, love the guitar sample and the frenetic percussion. I like what they did with Past the Duchy. Oh yeah, and I am not a fan of that 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 of that song. That is not a song I am nostalgic for from the eighties. Really? No, not at all. <laughs> oh my god, that was like oh, that was like the national anthem for a year. Oh, so. Wait, oh, it was hella over. Oh god, I just said hella. I mean, you I apologize. Did. You did. I apologize. I, I I talked to too many millennials. Um, I'm in some sort of bizarro universe I've entered into. <laughs> Likes repetition says hella. What the I fuck apolog- is going well, on I, here tonight? I apologize for the hella. Um, it is. It was very very overplayed. It was horribly overplayed. Um, I am just not nostalgic for that particular song. Um. But this was the point where I started thinking I need to listen to more Tribe Called Quest. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I, I you know I I wish I had gone back to listen to more since you know I had gotten into this album, but yeah. I mean, um, and we get another guest mention who was on the last track, but he didn't catch my attention, grab my attention because Elton John was on the last track. Um, Buster Rhymes is on. Yes, there. love Buster showing up. He's probably mm-hmm. my favorite guest on the album actually Mm -hmm. i mean Mm -hmm. yeah there's some that that eh, but i mean there's one other one that i think catches a little bit more of my attention as a musician but yeah bust is bust is a close maybe tied close second um at this point i started to worry that 15 may be a bit too much though you know i was concerned that the album might fall into the trap of elvis costello for both of us and and arian for you um but we'll, we'll we'll get into that later. Um, on to track six, kids. Love the sort of weird chip tune synth on this one, and this sort of echoed snare. It fill, it's filling the the role of a snare, but it's not a snare. But it's this great off kilter, insane groove that that really it's this fun groove that really contrasts these really dark lyrics about kids growing up in you know underprivileged areas. It is a hell of a slice of life, you know, generations yeah. coming into their own, disregarding the previous previous yeah. generation, disregarding what the kids are going through. Yeah. Sonically, it wears a little thin to me, though. I think... Um, I like... It's fun and kind of off-kelter and weird. I like that about it. Relies a little bit too much on Andre 3000. <laughs> okay, yeah. I didn't notice him on this one. Um, yeah. On to track seven, Melatonin. And to clarify, because I know somebody's going to think this melanin is the skin pigment melatonin is a sleep aid just to clarify that off the top um love the kind of fascinating off kilter groove there was a cracking sound i don't know if it was supposed to be a gunshot kind of used very randomly yeah um i I don't know if it's a percussion instrument producing it i think i know what you're talking about i think it was a sample of something but maybe a gunshot or something but it was it was used very randomly, which is interesting because you've got this nice and interesting kind of syncopated groove. And then the sound, this cracking sound that's just randomly comes in there. I love the line pop melatonin, like the Swedish fish. <laughs> Cause the whole song is about wanting to sleep, to escape what you have to deal with in your day to day life. Yeah. I absolutely love this song. Uh, I mean, yeah. especially the Abby Smith, Smith part at the end. Yeah, the sung part is a really nice change of pace. Um, love just, the sense. Yeah. The demonstration of that road to temptation and ruin yeah, and addiction, yeah. where she's just like, you know, maybe I could just try just one. You know, I'm tired, and you know, <laughs> and it's I'm not about the usual drug. It's about a sleep aid. Yeah, which I'm, was fascinating and very clever, but also dark as fuck. And right, they're playing like the the voice you know kind of thinly in the background this voice mm-hmm. kind of taunting her about you know yeah. this one you know will what it'll do and everything yeah just fucking brilliant the the escape was not getting high it was sleeping yeah fascinating um love the synth solo in the outro there's a lot of dead air at the end which is interesting <laughs> yeah they, they were not silent. afraid of dead air <laughs> well what they did with the later songs is fascinating and gets to my favorite guest but we'll get to that uh on to track eight enough this is a has just has a really nice kind of poppy groove reminded me of tv on the radio it's uh almost it's just a straight up slow jam how did the people yeah. of wikipedia miss the uh fuji sample i mean it was obviously the guitar from okay. killing me softly okay that's what it is okay I mean, it's like a real distinct net yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? um love how the vocal fits in the groove um reminded me of something from the early 80s maybe i'm thinking early 90s with killing me softly maybe that's what i was picking up that yeah. it reminded me of um i mean i don't think it's similarly musically to that i think it's a, mm-hmm. you know it is kind of a straight up slow jam but they you know they do layer so much on top of it yeah. and, and i think but they it's, just it's, use that guitar part from it that they kind of it, loop in and out a little bit but it's not just a straight up r&b song it's got a bit of a pop sound to it. it's a bit of an 80s feel it's very it's very tv on the radio where they kind of mix a lot of different yeah. genres together um well yeah the song this chorus. album 
like the the song be melatonin could easily be a rock song without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then you get this one that's like in a completely different direction, right. on its own. And speaking of interesting samples, track nine, Mobius, contains a prologue, a portion of prologue by Gentle Giant. They fucking sampled Gentle Giant. <laughs> when I looked this up, like what they were sampling. <laughs> Uh, like wait uh, you know i've listened to this album many many times back in like 16 mm-hmm. and 17 uh-huh. like gentle giant and can what yeah. the fuck <laughs> you know what prog heads if you've listened to this show for any like you know we are both big prog heads and this is out of my you know Same. These, the, gentle <laughs> Gi- i mean i'm aware of them i've heard wait, of here. here and there but I don't really regularly listen to either of them. They are obscure prog for us. Right. So I yeah. So last night, I mean, even though this album's an hour, I had to like go in and like mm-hmm. listen to Can. And I was just my mm-hmm. mind was blown. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. There's no way that that was done in 71. Either that right. or they possessed a time machine and came <laughs> back somehow yeah. and fucking performed that. But- and how do you not sample that? Is it when you go <laughs> A hip hop band, a hip hop band that samples fucking giant obscure prog, gentle giant, this, and uh, and can. My mind wasn't this blown; hasn't been this blown since Bad Religion quoted twenty first century schizoid man. Um, now, I mean, Serengeti, a Chicago rapper, does sample a lot of weird shit like Jan yeah. Hammer group and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not like eighties Jan Hammer, seventies right. Jan Hammer. <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, that's the better Jan Hammer, but he was all the Miola and all that. We still need to review some Alda Miola. Um, but back to Demovius. Um, love this just classic hip hop groove. Um, nice. And again, nicely repetitive, kind of droning in the verse. This is this stable background behind the verse, the track. And then it just changes a little bit and that goes for a while and then it changes back to the original one. Just nice kind of a droning feel to it. Um, and so they they get get into the whole like where songs are running into each other at this part of the album yeah, too yeah. like even though they're different sides like the last one comes right into this one mm-hmm. and and the way they build it too like you just think the beats start to wear a little thin and yeah. that's when they kick in with the gentle giant sample with the sitar right. and the vocals and uh-huh. you're just like what yeah. and then just you think well that's crazy they unleashed Buster Rhymes Buster's to do this back, yeah. feverish, crazy <laughs> rant over the nice sitar and vocal harmonies in the background. Buster Rhymes over a gentle giant sample. <laughs> Probably the most we've heard the uh, the N word on the, doing this show. Um, yes, we, absolutely. Um, did we need to I, roll up the windows like Michael Bolton from Office Space? <laughs> I was. I'm, I'm glad we're able to talk a bit about the lyrics because um, we sure as hell can't quote them. <laughs> I mean, I quote. I'm quoting a line here or there, but yeah, we we've, we're not going to be able to quote much of the lyrics. Um, <laughs> on to track ten, black spasmodic. Love the reggae guitar. They just go full on reggae for this one. And again, and, the song just runs into another another. Um, tip of the hat to to prog rock yeah and well the thing is they go reggae with this but they really emphasize that upbeat um that guitar tip you know it's a reggae thing where it falls on the upbeat it accents the upbeat they really stress the fucking upbeat on this song kind of works though um love the effect on q-tip's voice in the beginning q-tip's the only one i can name because he's the one i've heard before and he has a very distinctive voice (laughs) very high-pitched very distinctive voice this one did get a bit too repetitive for me um, I, you know, because it I does the liked, stab the upbeats like that. I like the chant, though. I mean, yeah, I don't even think I realized what they were actually chanting until you know, earlier for this <laughs> black spasmodic. Uh-huh. Until you see the title, yeah. yeah. Um, track 11, The Killing Season, love the bass sound. Great kind of doubling, dripping delay on the vocal. Like overly reverbed, but in the best way. Um, Sung Chorus is a great uh, twist. Also, this, there's this heavily flanged synth on the right side during verse two that's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, the, the, there's like a that sample of violin or keys in the mm-hmm. back, 
and it really just brings everything to life yeah at first yeah. i didn't remember this until it got to that chorus then i was like holy shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forget about this one <laughs> it's just um, like a bolt of lightning hits you on to track 12 lost somebody this is the one that contains a sample of hallelujah by can <laughs> Love uh, the kind of buzzing bass in the beginning. Great piano riff. Love that the vocal is ahead of the beat. I, I, I'm just for those who aren't around for my intermittent exp- explanation. You can play slightly ahead of the beat or slightly below behind the beat to give it a, to, to adjust the groove. Um, this is just a little bit ahead of the groove. Gives it a nice kind of racing feel. Um, love. I, the, the, I feel the album flirted with weird up until this point and now this one they is where they just dive yeah. right in yeah. to weird um, <laughs> which is this... why they get away with doing 15 songs i feel because yeah. they are um, so far all over the place and here they're yeah. just like well if you thought that was weird listen to this <laughs> um love the this the guitar and piano parts they're just hypnotic oh um, yeah this is definitely my favorite this is my strongest pick for strongest there's, on the album. there's this overactive drum machine interrupting the groove in the middle for a little bit that's just fascinating because it shouldn't piss me off because i'm a i love rhythm i'm a percussionist and then there's this drum machine just going insane but it just adds to it and it only happens for like half a verse right but it's, yeah. it's fascinating um and, and it just ca- was it kashia kade's uh vocals mm-hmm. it just kind of falls into her part just it's fucking overwhelming honestly yeah and then you know what all the all these years that i've listened to this i did not realize fife had passed while they oh, were wow. doing it i'm okay and this whole song is about him passing oh and shit i was just like oh my god and that that's, I, it. that's why there was the quote from his mother i was wondering about yeah that. and okay it even ends and i and i always thought it was odd i thought they were just being quirky uh-huh. where it goes silent but it's literally a moment of silence. <laughs> oh, okay. That explains it then. So I'm like, man, I'm an idiot. I've been listening to this album for years. I missed the story that Fife had passed even. I had no idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, doing the research. That makes, like, that's, what? Okay, that makes perfect sense. But after the moment of silence, we get these weird kind of echoey <laughs> electronic sounds. Suddenly Jimi Hendrix and, enters the room. <laughs> and then I realize, oh, maybe a sl- it's a slide guitar. Yeah. And then we get this kind of short bluesy solo. Unfortunately, it took me till he was name checked in a later song yeah. to look up who played it. Jack White. <laughs> Jack White plays guitar on this album. My favorite guest. I'm not a huge White Stripes fan. They're okay. I like them, but I love his guitar playing. I've always said he's like the last guitar hero, or at least yeah. like for now. <laughs> for a while. Um, Hopefully well, that'll change someday. Outside of metal, yeah, there are guitar here. There are definitely still guitar heroes in metal, um, but outside of metal, yeah, Jack White's probably the last one for a well, while. Most of those have come before his time, you know. No, there are some new ones too. There's new ones all the time, and but again, it's really exclusive to metal, which is very guitar heavy in the pop, quote unquote pop world. Yeah, guitar is not really a thing at the moment. For a, hasn't been a thing for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he's, probably, he's the last for a while, but yeah, it's great to hear Jack White. Um, On to track 12, moving backwards, contains a sample of The Touch of Your Lips by The Emotions. Um, And the last one just kind of leads into this with the guitar. Um, Right. Great guitar riff at the beginning of this. I don't know if it's Jack or if it was sampled. Um, I didn't listen to most of the songs that they sampled on this. Um, But I like either. (laughs) I mean, of course, I had to go after Can and Gentle Giant. Right, of course. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sad if I had to hear. I had to listen to Sabbath because it's a Sabbath That's song true. that shares, a, shares a name with my, one of my favorite Smithereen songs. Right. Um, and I think I'd heard it before. I just never really thought much of it, honestly. Right. Uh, I um, think I heard the, listened to the emotions, too, just for the hell of it. Okay. Um, but I like how it, this one just kind of stops down before the sung part and then just kind of builds back up into the verse groove. Um, at this point, I was getting a little fatigued. You know, well, a few yeah. tracks before the end. They are, they, they, you know, they can wear you out. <laughs> but I was still on board. I know I wasn't done. I was just getting a little fatigued. Um, the reverb heavy claps are back. I love that sound. This just has the, a crunchy funk to it, doesn't it? I mean, so again, it's like, you, you 
Say again, you kind of got you got a little uh, cut out there. It's like a crunchy funk it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, love the lead guitar that comes in toward the end again, Jack. Love his lead playing. Um, it's on such to like an old school soul sound. Yeah. Oh it, yeah, too. absolutely. Um, on to track fourteen, Conrad Tokyo. There's this great kind of muted synth at the beginning. Reminds me a lot of the Police, uh, kind of Ghost in the Machine era. Right. It's like, um, or I was thinking, yeah, well, yeah, I guess I could see like a new wave sound, almost like an yeah. early Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. Um, love how the vocals again are mixed very low, makes you listen. Love the line, Sayonara tomorrow, he's just blood on the ground. <laughs> so fucking timely now. Um, oh man, uh, just like an apocalyptic rap. Yeah. And you don't play keyboards on this. I bet you didn't expect to have a keyboard solo on this. Love that keyboard solo in the middle um, <laughs> between the verses. And it's not just one keyboard. There's like three different keyboard sounds coming in and all soloing at once. Oh, do you think it's all three of them playing keys on it? Because they don't credit I don't know. the keys on this one, I don't think. Well, if it's not credited, it might be... Um, well, Q-Tip plays keys on it, on the album. Yeah. I don't know the specific tracks. There were other I... keyboard players credited on Wikipedia. Yeah, there are. Look. Um, but I don't know who played on this particular song. Um, probably a few of them. Um, but I love how there's these three different keyboard sounds all competing. Um, and again, we get the, a very similar bluesy guitar solo at the end. Um, on to track 15, Ego contains a sample of a requiem for, requiem for soprano, mezzo soprano, two mixed choirs and orchestra by, apologies for this, Giorgi Ligeti. Le, uh, from the soundtrack of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Love the opening guitar riff. Um, the noise that comes in, I think, is the sample. That's what I think, um, too. And it like it just puts so much tension to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're again going and, for a build like the opening track, because this this is, of course, the climax of the album. Right, right. Um, love the, the unison vocals and how the there's a sudden change to these new different riffs that just kind of come out of nowhere. Um, love that again, playing with the timings, wrapping a little ahead of the beat. Um, and combined with this staccato, this kind of ahead of the beat wrapping and this staccato droning riff, uh, probably Jack White. This is where they name check Jack White. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure that's him playing the riff. Just gives this song just this great maddening feel. Well, right, because um, just as you think it's going as crazy as it can be, they pull this jazzy little sample or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of the fact you're just like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Loved the line, ego has no ending, has people pretending religious zealots get perilous because God's will they, they're they defending. Um, this is my favorite track. Yeah, it, it is really good. Um, loved the groove at the ego, ego part at the end. They just It's this kind of anthemic chant. Um, goes out. This should have been the end of the album. Well, you always have to have the denouement. <laughs> <sighs> I, I would normally say that, but on to track eleven, the Donald. Yeah, it, you hit that one. He hits that one guitar note, and that's like it. That's boom. You know that yeah. that is the climax right there. Right, and then uh, the Donald, the yo's at the beginning. I know it's a thing in hip hop. It's very <laughs> much a trope. It just went on a little bit too long for me. I don't know if they were parodying it or not. Um, I agree, actually. I I think the Buster Rhymes part just goes on too long, and then it gets then it gets brought back. It's even. It, it's it's such a trope in rap that they, they may have been intentionally parodying it. Um, like the muted keyboards. Um, I don't know how this relates to Trump. Right. They mentioned Trump, but it's really weird because um, they're also talking about uh, uh, Fife. You know, they, mm-hmm. they're, they're mentioning Fife Dog. You know, uh-huh. like kind of a rest in peace kind of thing. But yeah. then they're also bringing up Donald Trump at the same time. Although I got to add, I swear they're doing the Friday the Thirteenth sounds as they're talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. That would have been a nice subtle commentary that I missed. Because it really I just... Swear you hear the ch 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 Okay. As there's <laughs> Donald Trump's name repeatedly over and over again. I was saying, thinking to myself, it's going to be very difficult for me to pick a favorite and a least favorite on this album. Because I was really enjoying all of it. Um, and then Ego came along, loved it. Um, yeah. I really still had to skim through to pick a favorite before I decided on Ego. This was definitely my weakest. Um, yeah. 
I agree and, entirely. This is my pick for weakest too. Even though it's, it's send off for Fife, but you know. Yeah, but it's a missed opportunity bringing Trump in in sixteen. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I weird. mean, maybe they just didn't know yet. We have a very different perspective now on him. Um, oh, I think they knew. I, mean, I think they that's knew. The crazy thing Every, about this album: everything that they, they said was Every, true. <laughs> Every, and I am a multiple minority. Every every marginalized person knew in sixteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it, but we still even now have a very uh, even now have a different perspective. It, we now we know for a fact. Um, but I just it's I I know they're not typing Trump, but the criticism just isn't very clear. Right. Eh, you know. Um, so, um, I think this is an obvious question, but <laughs> I'm going to just say we both recommend it. They also do the weird early cutoff like they did in um, yeah. an earlier songs with the, um, you know, where you uh-huh. think you're not expecting it to cut off all of a sudden. Right, right, right. Um, um, but yeah, I'd safe, recommend it. Yeah, safe to say we both recommend it. It is a bit long, but I really enjoyed it. Just, just skip the last track. It's yeah, it's quite a ride the, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, this album and last week's album are very similar in a lot of ways, where they're taking this offshoot of prog and right. kind of working it into this different way. Um, and I, both I was are a, criticisms against drugs in in a lot of weird ways. <laughs> I was a little fatigued with moving back on moving backwards, but they pulled me right back with the next two tracks. Loved it. Just skip the last one. It doesn't. It's not necessary. Yeah, yeah the last one is. But all right, that, that, okay. <laughs> yeah. all right, that's it for we got it from here. Thank you for your service. Until next time, and we'll be reviewing Kenny Dennis the third or Kenny Dennis three. Yeah, I think I'm not... it's Kenny Dennis three. Okay, by Serengeti, the, we're finally getting into the the Kenny Dennis uh, saga. We're just gonna do the middle <sighs> portion of the saga. Yeah, the saga is still going on. Yeah, you know, so there's uh-huh. no way to. Is this the one with Dennehy on it? No. Okay. Um, that well, I'll, I'll discuss that track because it's an interesting one. Um, See, so... Dennehy is the beginning of the saga. Oh, okay. Oh, he's okay. pretty. He he starts out as just an he's SNL, just, okay. the who Bears kind of guy. Right. Who he is? He's talking about who he is on that track. And then, like, he works up into this. Former gangster rapper, like it, it, okay. it just goes, it goes, and the, this is actually where the story kind of takes a dark turn. Oh, okay. Um, because <laughs> on the song Dennehy, it's almost a shot at Dennehy because this is not a guy you want to be your fan. <laughs> uh, he's just, I mean, when he goes to LA, he brings his hunter tapes. You know? uh-huh. Oh, god, as a child of the 80s, that hurts a little too much. <laughs> It's on Pluto now. In fact, I think they may have a Hunter channel. I, I, first, I had to. At first, I didn't get the joke. You know, like he brought his Hunter tapes, which I'm not sure why. And then I was like, oh, fuck. He's in L.A. Hunter took place in L.A. Yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, Hunter was a cop show in the late 80s. Um, starring Fred, Fred Dreyer. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what artist in it. Um, a former football player. Um it's an 80s cop show. It is the it is the quintessential 80s cop show. Yes. Um, it's Pluto, a dirty Harry knockoff kind yeah, of. Yeah. Pluto.com. It's like a, a TV. Rep- it's a, basically the internet equivalent of channel surfing. Great, great site. Love it to death. They have, I think they have, I, I know I watched Hunter on there recently. I think they may have a Hunter channel. Um, <laughs> it does not age well. No, of course. Um, it wasn't good then. Are you kidding me? Even as like a twelve-year-old well, watching no, that, no. it's kind of like, oof, oh, this is brutal. <laughs> um, in contrast, they also have a Baywatch channel. I watched Baywatch. <laughs> have not so seen Baywatch. In, have not watched Baywatch in ages. It works so beautifully as an unintentional comedy. Now, <laughs> it is beautifully bad. Um. Anyway, until then, after that big digression. Always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.